What's going on, family? This is Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. I want to take a look at a fighter by the name of Tommy Farr. Tommy Farr was a Welshman. He became Joe Lewis's first title defense in 1937. Joe Lewis became heavyweight champion of the world. The first African-American heavyweight champion after Jack Johnson. And Joe Lewis knocked out Jimmy Braddock in 1937. But he was knocked out himself in 1936 when he faced Max Schmeling. So after defeating Jimmy Braddock in 37, he was not satisfied until he got Max Schmeling back in the ring. But this wouldn't happen until he had a, a title defense. And his first title defense was with Tommy Farr in 1937. Tommy Farr went the distance with Joe Lewis, 15 rounds. I want to take a look at that fight, but let's take a look at the record of Tommy Farr. But here you have Tommy Farr, born Clyde Ash Val, South Wales. On March 12, 1914, he was a Welsh heavyweight and began his professional career in 1926. On December 18th, he was placed on a card against a fighter by the name of Jack Jones, defeated him in six rounds. Then in 1927, he would face a fighter by the name of Albie Davis on April 2nd. He lost to him in 10 rounds. In 1928, he would face Young Hazel. January 28th, defeat him in six rounds. February 25th, Young Krako. And go six rounds and earn a draw in 1928. 1929, he would face fighters such as Tom Thomas, Lynn Jones, Kid Spurdo, Tommy Herbert, Trevor Herbert, Kid Evans, Trevor Herbert again, Tommy Holly, Billy Jones, very good fighter, December 2nd, he would defeat him in 10 rounds, 1930, January 18th, he would face Billy Pitchard and get a 10 round draw, have two more fights in 1930, a loss and a win, 1931, February 7th, he would face Brian Powell and Blackwood and receive a 10 round draw. March 28th, he would face Jack Powell and receive a 12 round victory. 1932, December 30th, he would face Jerry Dale and receive a 12 round draw. December 21st, Charlie Bundy, 15 round victory. 1933, he would have several fights, as you can see. He would lose one fight to Billy Thomas on February 18, 1933. He would lose a 15-round decision. But he would win the remainder of his fights, except for a seven-round knockout of himself on May 15, 1933. He would be stopped by Eddie Steele in London. July 22nd, he would face Randy Jones, defeat him in 15 rounds, and win the Welsh light heavyweight title. He would face fighters such as Jack Marshall, Seaman Harvey, Steve McCall, Leo Evans and complete that year of 1933. 1934, January 21st, he would face Kid Scott. Knock him out in one round. He would lose to Eddie Phillips on February 1st, 1934. He would face Jim Winters, defeat him in 15 rounds. And then on April 23rd, he would lose to Jack Casey at Newcastle, lose to him in 12 rounds. He would lose another 12-round fight against Charlie Bellanger, May 7th. In Newcastle, he would lose on a foul to Eddie Phillips on June 13th, 1934. 
And he would continue fighting throughout 1934-1935. He would face Eddie Phillips, lose him in 15 rounds for the British Light Heavyweight Championship. And this would go on in 1936. He would face Tommy Lachlan, January 15th, and defeat him in 10 rounds. And eventually he would face Joe Lewis, as we're going to look at that fight now, in 1937. And like I said, he went the distance with Joe Lewis. 15 rounds. And I questioned Joe Lewis's punching power. I don't know why. So Joe Lewis made sure he got the majority of knockouts for the remainder of his fights. So let's take a look at that fight between Tommy Farr and Joe Lewis. Now here you have the setup on a Lewis Farr world title go. New York, August 29th. Facts and figures on tomorrow night's heavyweight championship fight. Principles. Joe Lewis, Detroit, world heavyweight champion versus Tommy Farr, Wales, British Empire champion. The place will be Yankee Stadium in New York. Length of the bout is 15 rounds to a decision. Time of the bout, first pre preliminary, 7 p.m. Detroit standard main bout, 9 p.m. Maybe advanced in weather is threatening. Probable weights. Lewis, 198 pounds, far 204. Probable attendance, 35,000. Probable receipts, 350,000. Include radio and motion picture receipts. Broadcast NBC hookups for main bout. Starting not earlier than 8.15 p.m. Preliminaries. Buddy Bear, Livermore, California versus Abe Simon. These are the undercards. New York, Tiger Jack Fox, Indianapolis versus Steve Dupass, Edgewater, New Jersey. Harry Basimo, New York versus Chris DeRosa, Boston. Dave Clark, Detroit versus Charlie Massara. Pittsburgh, six rounds each. Joe Wagger, Newark, New Jersey versus Phil Samessis, New York. Johnny Povlich, New York versus Maxie Long, Dallas, Texas, four rounds each. Detroit Free Press. Here you have Tommy Farr and Joe Lewis. The Brown Bomber right moves on his British foe. Tommy Farr as a challenge his eyes. Tommy Farr sticks out a left jab. See Joe Lewis purring the jab. So you can see here in the first round, they came slowly to the center of the ring. Farr poked two jab, uh, left jabs to the face, and they clinched. Farr shot a, ha uh, a hard right to the temple and follows with a left, a light left to the body. The champ missed twice with left counter punches, but scored with a half a dozen left jabs to the face. Far as nose and right eye redden under punishment. Says here round two, Lewis came out on his toes but Farr made the first lead, forcing Joe to give ground as he connected with a snappy left hook to the head. Tommy moved in and out of range quickly, swifting his head, uh, his lead 
from the head to the body while Louis sparred cautiously. Seems like they're making it out to look like Joe Louis was having problems here. This is August 31st, 1937. Here you have here the challenger and champion as they looked in the 15th round. Now Arthur Donovan had Lewis up 13, 4, 1, 1 even. Bruce Lynch had Lewis up 8, 4, 5, and 2 even. McPartland had Lewis up nine to six, uh, four, four or six, and there was no even round. So I just wanted to look at this fight. Far jaws, Joe, with the left. Far's weaving motion. That part of Joe. See Tommy Farr getting under the left with Joe Lewis. Far ducks under Lewis's left. So like I said, this was Joe Lewis's first title defense in 1937 of August. I was like, yeah. Here you have a famous picture of all the champions in the ring that night at Yankee Stadium on that Far and Lewis card. And you have here all the way over in the corner here, you got Jimmy Braddock and you got Jack Johnson. You can hardly see Jack Johnson. Referee Arthur Donovan, Cisco Escobar's in there. You can see here Benny Leonard, Barney Ross, Tony Canzanari, Mickey Walker. Gene Tunney, Jack Dempsey, Marcel Thiel. You have here Max Melling and Max Bear. This is Tommy Far after the fight. All cut up. Joe Lewis goes home with his wife Marva. Thirty-three thousand four hundred eighty-nine fans pay to watch the fight. Paid attendance thirty-three thousand four hundred eighty-nine. Total attendance thirty-six thousand nine hundred and three. Net gate receipts two hundred twenty-two thousand four hundred sixty-three dollars and eighty cents. Federal tax twenty-eight thousand four hundred nine dollars twenty-nine cents. State tax fourteen thousand eight hundred eighty dollars and nine uh, two cents. Excuse me. Eight the gross receipts. $265,753.11. Now, the radio and movie, movie receipts, 60000 Wow. That's a lot for that time. Total income, $282,463.80. Lewis share, 40% of the gate, will be of the total. And far share was a guarantee $60,000. Stadium rental. The stadium rental was 10% of the net receipt, which was $22,246.38. Milk fund, 10 cents of the, uh, of the net. 10% of the net, excuse me. $22,246.38. Promoter share, 64000 $983.52. Amazing. Mike Jacobs was the promoter for that fight.
Now, Joe Lewis received a lot of criticism, as you can see here, for not knocking out Tommy Fall. And they were questioning his punching power and his ability to fight. Because Max Melling was supposed to be fighting Jim Braddock. But instead, in order for Lewis to get that fight, Jacobs agreed to pay Jim Braddock 10% of Joe Lewis's purse for the remainder of his career. But at some point, they knew they was going to have to get in there with Max Mellon. And the fact that he went, Joe Lewis went the distance with Tommy Farr, they were making a lot of issues about that. Now, I wanted to show you some of the criticism of some of these ex-fighters. Jack Dempsey, 15 years ago, against that sort of a fighter, I would have sent Jack Kearns out to do the fighting. I would have stayed in the corner. Jack Johnson, give me three pork chops and a breath of fresh air, and I'll challenge him both. Jack Sharkey, and to think they booed me. That's not the same Lewis who knocked my head off with the left. Gene Tunney, very interesting engagement. Very. Jim Braddock, I'd like another whack at that champion. If he had fought the same fight against me that he did against Farr, Lewis would never taken, would never have taken the title. I may be bad, but not that bad. Barney Ross, Lewis won going away, but he didn't look very good doing it. I never saw a man with his punching power so consistently refuse to use it. Max Melling, I will beat Lewis every day in the week and twice on Sundays. He didn't try for a knockout because he was scared he might get hurt. That hurt hand, and he's just talking gibberish. Pedro Martinez, all these fighters were there at ringside. Is it true the big fellow gets fifty and sixty thousand dollars for that? Mickey Walker. And to think I gave up a dinner of steamed clams and beer to watch this thing. Benny Leonard. I was I was born too soon and too light. Johnny Dundee the Scotch Watch. So was I. Max Bear. I could beat them both. I am the greatest fighter in the world. I'll be champion again before the end of next week, or next year. Lou Ambers, far as a game guy, ain't it? Shame he can't punch. I can't figure out how any man that big can't knock your head off. And this goes on. All of these fighters that were there that night had something slick to say. But I just wanted to show you Joe Lewis and Tommy Farr. So this is Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. Salute to my subscribers. Just wanted to acknowledge Tommy Farr. When he fought Joe Lewis, August 1937. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Peace.